Let's begin with a simple example. We'll go to the Express subpalette, Signal Analysis, and the Simulate Signal block. Again, like all Express VIs, when we place this down, it automatically comes up with the ability to configure it. We're going to choose the default settings. We're not going to worry too much about the actual details behind this particular Express VI. We're just going to use it to generate a signal. If we right click on the output, which is our sine wave, we go to our Create sub palette. We have the choice of creating either a graph indicator or a numeric indicator. Let's create a graph indicator at this time. When we run the VI, we see our sine wave. But observe that it's not just an array of numbers. It's also got the important timing information. It's got the names of the axes, and it has the name of the plot included as part of the plot legend. This is one of the benefits of the dynamic data type which ExpressVIs use. In fact, if we were to make a duplicate of our ExpressVI and configure it to generate a different wave, If I were to connect the output of our second simulate signal to the output of the first one, connecting two outputs together without an operation such as build array or build cluster or something like that is in general an operation which leads to a broken VI. However, the dynamic data type has built-in intelligence such that it automatically adds this function here, which you can see is the merge signals function. Now, when we run this VI, we see we have our two waves, and if we were to move and expand our legend, we would see the appropriate information is represented for both of them. If I were to modify my second ExpressVI, for example, to generate, for example, more data than before, and now when we run it, we see that indeed the time information is kept for both of them and we can see that our triangle wave has been generated with 0.3 seconds worth of data whereas the original sine wave has only 0.1 seconds of data. The dynamic data type can also automatically convert data into various necessary forms. For example, if we were to create a numeric indicator and also a numeric array if we were to connect up the output of that dynamic data type and the output of the same wire to the array, we'll observe two different behaviors. Next when we run it, we see, first of all, the numeric scalar has gotten a value. Also we see that the array has gotten a value as well. But interestingly enough, this array contains only two elements, and the numeric contains only a single value. So the natural question is, what actual information is being stored here? We would probably have expected our array not to contain only two elements, and in fact, rather to contain the entire set of data. Well, it's absolutely possible to do that, but it's important to pay close attention to the way that data gets converted from the dynamic data type into our various other data types. Let's begin here. Observe that a block was automatically created in between our dynamic data type wire and our array. This is the convert from dynamic data. This itself is an ExpressVI. What that means is we can double click on it to change its configuration. We see here that it is automatically selected this choice, 1D array of scalars automatic. Recall that the conversion is from dynamic data type to a type of our choice. We have a few other choices here when we're generating a 1D array of data. The first is a 1D array of waveform. The next is the 1D array of scalars automatic. And the next 1D array of scalars most recent value. And the next 1D array of scalars single channel. This conversion is most likely the one that would be of the most use. Here we must specify which channel we want, and we have choices between 0 and 1. And what will happen when we now run this is we'll observe that instead of just two points in this array, if we make the vertical scroll bar visible. As we scroll, we observe the array of data which matches this triangle wave. So in this way, we could create a control 
which allows us to choose which channel. If we were to switch that to channel 0 and rerun it, we see now instead of 300 points approximately, we now have 100 points approximately, which represents our sine wave. The Convert From Dynamic Data Type ExpressVI gives us a variety of choices when we're doing this conversion. We can choose, as mentioned, the 1D array choices. We also have the ability to choose 2D arrays. In this way, if multiple channels have been merged together, as is in our case, then all the data from each channel will be presented in a 2D array, much like we see here in the sample data. Alternately, where rows are channels, it's equivalent just transposed. The other choice is to provide a single scalar value, in this case, returning the last value from the particular channel. So we see here channel 1 in the simulation is the red, and we see that the return value is 0, and channel 0, the return value is 2. Or we can choose to receive a single waveform. In this case, the entire waveform will be given, but for only the channel which has been specified. Also, if we were to investigate the signal manipulations palette a little bit further, we see that there are, in addition to the merge signals and the from DDT, which are the two blocks we see here, there's also a to DDT, which allows us to generate dynamic data type data based on an incoming type of various numerics. And here we have the exact same sets of choices as we had previously. However, here the input will be an array or a 2D array or a scalar data or a waveform, and the output will be dynamic data type. Similarly, we have the ability to select signals. Here we were prompted with a list of a variety of signals, and we can choose which ones we wanted. For example, if we were to connect this up, Once we have run it once, the data will be present in our ExpressVI. So now when we go to format it, we see the actual number of channels and their names. And if we wished to select only the triangle wave, we could choose triangle wave, and then using the right arrow, take it into our selected signals. And that way the signal output, if we were to make a duplicate of our plot, will now show only the triangle wave. There are a variety of other manipulation VIs here, including align and resample, trigger and gate, extract portion, append signals, most of which are self explanatory and offer very useful user interfaces. For example, if we were to take the extract portion, place this on our block diagram, we see here we have the choice of whether we begin at an offset or a sample number. We can also choose the duration of the portion we wish to extract, whether it's a length, a number of samples, or everything from that point to the end. And again, whenever we have an ExpressVI, if we run it once with sample data being connected into it, as seen here, the next time we go to configure that VI, our actual data will be present here. And this makes it very easy to visualize and understand the exact behavior of the ExpressVIs. The remainder of these manipulation functions I invite you to try on your own and, and investigate their online help for further documentation. It's important to remember that although these functions are very convenient and often extremely useful and very much easy to use, they can always be done using the standard array manipulation functions. We may find in some particularly challenging or large data set applications that there is an overhead to using dynamic data types and to convert data back and forth. It's possible that you may find the best solution to a particular problem, even if it is something that an ExpressVI can solve, will be to do it manually on arrays of data or on the waveform data type.